Often religious people are portrayed as sheep or conformists who follow whatever they're told. We'll be examining this today as well as another objection, which is the statement that religions were created by people in power to control the masses. We're going to be looking at these very quickly. I hope you enjoy our presentation. There's no doubt that religious individuals often do not question their beliefs. But at the same time this goes for everyone. An individual can be a materialist, someone who believes that everything in the world is physical, and at the same time does not question this proposition. They do not examine it critically. As well, atheists can often point out that agnostics do not question their position on agnosticism and should be open and forthcoming after questioning such a proposition with atheism as the fundamental true belief system. There is no doubt as well that there are Christians, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, Zoroastrians, or Buddhists who have grown up within that culture, just like an atheist, an agnostic, or a secularist, and have not critically examined it. They have not researched the topic, nor sought out alternative views that might call their belief into question. So it is undeniable that individuals of any background can be in a state of uncritical thought. And it's important to acknowledge this. Now of course, when it comes to belief systems, following a belief system cannot be intrinsically bad. Uh, if you are an atheist, and you believe the world, for example, in addition to atheism, is wholly material, that actually might be true, and you yourself have not investigated it. Agnosticism might be the best position, and yet you have not, exa you have not actually examined it yourself. When it comes to questions of truth, I myself might fully follow the herd, if you will, when it comes to quantum physics, biology, geology, or even aspects of history. That does not mean that because I am following that this is actually a negative thing. One of the problems that come up when religious people are presented as being conformists or sheep is the issue of ethics and societal norms. There's no doubt that in certain periods of history, the dominant belief system was in fact, for example, Christianity or in other areas, Buddhism, Hinduism, or Islam, whereas now we predominantly live in a culture that is secular. Oftentimes, individuals hold their beliefs as Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, theists, in contrast to the prevailing notions of the culture in which they live. So while they may have been conformists and following the herd at one time, the dominant cultural movement itself is actually, in this case, secularism, which makes them individuals who stand out and against the dominant belief system. I know I was talking to a friend once who was uh, an atheist and a very intelligent man, and he was saying how hard it is to live in such a predominantly Christian environment, such an intensely Judeo-Christian world. And I said, to empathize, um, I fully understand what you mean you walk into, say, your local grocery store, and you see pictures of the Pope, and you have Christian hymns sounding over the airwaves. You walk up, say, to the teller at Safeway, and you encounter, you know, if you will, magazines covering issues surrounding the Trinity, or that you have to be an ethical realist and believe in justice and truth and honesty are real cosmic principles. You might actually have a hard time walking around and constantly being bombarded with religious propaganda and theistic propaganda. And I said, oh wait a minute, uh, that actually never happens. <laughs> For the most part, in the culture in which I live, we are bombarded all the time with, if you will, secular values. We are confronted with media, marketing, ads, etc that fully represent a worldview that is non-religious. So when it comes to being a conformist and following the herd, it depends which milieu you are actually living within. This brings us to the other facet of the claim that religious people are sheep. It's connected to this other proposition that religion has been a tool created by people in power to control the masses. I think it's undeniable that at times rulers throughout the world have, them, have aligned themselves with religious values and religious beliefs in order to actually placate the people, in order to actually 
if you will, seek a stable social order, not disrupt the status quo, and they use religious institutions as the means to control. There is, however, a problem with the claim that religions were created by people in power to control the masses. The problem is history. When we look, for example, at the origins of Christianity, we find that it was in contrast to the prevailing notions. It was a minority sect that was persecuted both by the Roman authorities later and the Jewish community at the time. So the individuals who were within the Christian camp in its early history were diametrically opposed to the ruling order of Judaism or the polytheistic notions of the Roman Empire. So much so, as I said, that they were actually persecuted and ostracized. So to claim that it was actually created by people in power in order to control the people, well, they actually had a system in power. They had the Jewish religion and the polytheistic religions of the Greco-Roman world. The same goes, for example, for Islam. When we look at the history of Islam, for the first decade and subsequent, after the Prophet Muhammad moved to Medina, the community itself was attacked and persecuted. It was economically boycotted. Some were killed, many were persecuted and hurt and even tortured because of their belief in Islam. So it was not created by those in power in order to control the people. They had a system present in place that was actually guiding or, if you will, part of the fabric of the society. So Islam itself contradicts this issue or this proposition that religion was created by those in power to control the people. Uh, the same goes for Buddhism, actually. When we actually, when we look at the, say, the Pali Canon, we see a culture, an intellectual and spiritual culture coming out of Buddhism that is in direct contrast and challenging the status quo of the Hindu system that was in place. We have questioning of the caste. We have questioning of the Brahmin class or caste itself. And we see that this community was also opposed by those in power because it was seen as a threat to the status quo. Just as Islam threatened the status quo and Christianity threatened the status quo. When we really, really look at the historical basis of the religions of our world, they were not sheep systems because they were standing against the status quo, nor were they placed in power because those in power were opposed to it. The only way you could save this proposition would be to state that those in power created a system against their own status quo as a means to create a new status quo and then persecuted and fought against it as, if you will, a farce or illusion. But this is entirely unhistorical. We see the same thing within the Babi Baha'i community. It is impossible that individuals chose the Babi faith and then the Baha'i faith in order to actually be part of the status quo or the dominant culture because thousands were martyred in the process of accepting it. Often, as with all of the divine religions, individuals accepted the claims, say, of Jesus or the Buddha or of the Bab and Baha'u'llah at a, with a threat to their life, the loss of livelihood, the loss of friends and family. I myself experienced, if you will, a loss of friends and associates because of my own acceptance of the Baha'i Faith. So it cannot be seen as an adoption of a worldview to fit in, to conform, nor can it be seen as a system placed in power by, sorry, placed there by those in power to control. So while there is no doubt that individuals saw the power, for example, of Judaism or Christianity or Islam or Buddhism or Hinduism, and utilized that for their own ends, we cannot maintain that religious individuals are inherently conformists because they regularly left the comfort and ease of the status quo to adopt a new faith. As well, they opposed it, so we cannot claim that it was created as a means to control by those in power.